Prior to this video, proteins from the tissue of interest have been isolated and separated by charge on an IPG strip using isoelectric focusing, or IEF. For detailed information leading to the IEF step, please refer to the corresponding protocols available on the ArrayBridge website. Following the IEF, we carefully remove each IPG strip and blot dry on a paper towel. In this particular case, we will be demonstrating the process using the small format PEP plate. The large format PEP plate that is used to separate and measure more complex proteomes follows a similar procedure. This is followed by the first of two refolding steps. Each IPG strip is transferred to a tray and covered by a small amount of refolding buffer. A pasture pipette is used to add the buffer, starting in the center and working outwards to ensure no air bubbles are trapped. Following a five minute incubation in the first refolding buffer, the IPG strip is transferred to an empty lane in the tray and the second refolding buffer added for another five minute incubation. Following the second refolding step, the IPG strips are inserted into the gel for the second dimension separation, being careful to push them down all the way so they make contact with the gel. We generally insert the strips after running buffer has been added to the cathode reservoir. It's also important to be consistent in the orientation of the IPG strips in the well. We place the acidic end of the strip on the left side Whichever orientation you decide on, be consistent so data can be compared between experiments. If you haven't already done so, add running buffer to the lower reservoir. Then start the gel electrophoresis. Follow the instructions to set voltage and time for running the second dimension gel. While the gel is running, the PEP plate is prepared. After first rinsing with water to wet the plate, 50 microliters of PEP transfer buffer is added to each well. Here I am using an 8 channel 96 well format pipette to sequentially add buffer to alternate rows of the plate. After first finning, filling the odd numbered rows, I do the even numbered rows. 
In this step, don't worry about overfilling the wells. Any excess buffer will be squeezed out by the gel being placed on top. Two PEP plates are being prepared, so the second is filled just like the first. In a typical analysis, two plates would be used so that two conditions, such as disease versus normal, could be compared. To assemble the gel sandwich for protein elution to the plate, start by placing two sheets of filter paper soaked in transfer buffer on the transplant apparatus. Then place the filled PEP plate on top of the filter paper, followed by the gel. Note carefully the orientation of the gel relative to the plate so the correlations can be made between the gel and the wells on the plate. Typically, the upper left corner of the gel is aligned with the upper left corner of the PEP plate. Finally, add two more sheets of filter paper soaked in transfer buffer. In this case, we are transferring two gels, so the assembly of the second sandwich is identical to the first. Once the gel sandwiches are assembled, finish assembling the transplant apparatus and start the transfer, following the instructions for the current and time settings. While the protein transfer is taking place, prepare the polypropylene master plate by adding 50 microliters of buffer to each well. Use a buffer appropriate to the activity assay that will be performed at the end of the procedure. Often we use PBS, although if a kinase or phosphatase assay was planned, 
you would want to use a buffer that didn't contain phosphate. As before, we are using the same pipetting technique that we used to fill the PEP plate and preparing two plates as we have two gels. Once the transfer is complete, the gel sandwich can be taken apart and the contents of the PEP plate transferred to the master plate. We find that if the transplant apparatus is taken apart quickly, the gel often sticks to the upper plate. So after relieving pressure on the sandwich, we wait roughly 10 seconds before removing the upper plate. Then remove the upper plate and the gel. It's generally better to peel the gel away from side to side rather than top to bottom as any mixing that could occur between wells during this step will be confined to similar molecular weight proteins. The solution used in the PEP plate is designed to minimize protein diffusion between adjacent wells. Prior to transfer of the PEP plate contents to the master plate, we generally find it easier to move the PEP plate from the transplant apparatus to the bench so that the two plates can be placed side by side. If you do this, then move the PEP plate with the underlying filter paper to minimize drying out of the plate. For this transfer, I'm using a 16 channel 384 well format pipette to sequentially remove 50 microliters from each column and transfer to the master plate. In between transferring each column, I blot the, tr the, dip the tips dry on a paper towel to minimize carryover. This step accomplishes a two-fold dilution of the PEP plate contents and also dilutes into a buffer appropriate for your activity assay. Don't worry about bubbles at this stage. In most cases, you will not be able to draw up the full 50 microliters from the PEP plate. This will result in bubbles in most of the wells of the master plate. The bubbles are actually useful to help you keep track of your position on the plate as you make the transfers. The final step is to create one or more master plates from your, sorry, the final step is to create one or more assay plates from your master plates. In this case, we are creating two duplicate assay plates, each having 25 microliters from the master plate. In this transfer, it is important not to create bubbles, as these, as these will generally interfere with your assay readout. To accomplish the transfer without creating bubbles, draw up slightly more than the total you plan to dispense so that a small amount will be left in the tip after dispensing. In this case, I'm drawing up 50.5 microliters, dispensing 25 microliters into each plate and then blowing out the last half microliter onto a paper towel before proceeding to the next column. I then proceed down the plate until all 24 wells are done. The final step following this is to perform activity assays on each enzyme assay plate. The master plate can be refrigerated or frozen in case further sample is needed for additional assays or protein identification by mass spec.